Okay, so Pi News episode 74. And it's been a while. Uh, so the last Pi News, Pi News 73, was on the 9th of January. So some of these stories may seem a bit older, but I figured rather than leave them out, I'd put them in. So first up, uh, Eben Upton did another Pi cast on the Tom's Hardware YouTube channel. And uh, loads of interesting things came out of this. I took some notes. So Eben talked about the process of bringing 0W stocks up. I'm pretty sure he meant 0.2Ws, uh, which have been really, really hard to get hold of, but it's a great, great machine. Talks in great detail about the two cameras that were released a month ago. The next hardware likely to come out from them is a new screen. Uh, so a new portable screen with better resolution. Talked about Bluetooth on the Pico W and confident they could make it work. More on that later in the news. And mentions they still sell a lot of Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 models. They sell tens of millions of pounds worth of Raspberry Pi 3s every month to industrial customers. Obviously not everything needs the power of something like a Pi 4. So if a Pi 3 can be cheaper and do the same job. And he said it's impossible to go out of stock on the Pico and Pico W. They've got loads of them. So I'll put a link in the description of this video. It's worth watching. Uh, as I say, loads of information and probably some of the stuff that I've missed. On Reddit, we had this portable Raspberry Pi with a BlackBerry style keyboard. In fact, it's got the BlackBerry logo on it. And there are more pictures here. So we've got NeoFetch running here, little camera on the back, and an option there for portable gaming. Nice to see some insides of it. You can see GPIO pin connections here, Pi 02W inside, or oh, magnetic connector. So it's a removable keyboard. And it looks like more recently they've done a Raspberry Pi 4 version. It does look nice with that BlackBerry keyboard. PlayStation emulation. Yeah, very cool looking. Now some Facebook posts. Uh, so Dospian 2, which is basically a way of running uh, DOS. And also you can run Windows through it as well on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it runs Windows, I think, 95 and 98. Just a small update. Dospian 2 will use Samba to access Dospian folders. It's usually quite difficult to get uh, games and information onto older Windows systems and DOS. Uh, but this looks like it'll be a much, much more simple way of doing it. Just an image here and a comment. Well, that didn't age well. My other computer costs $35. Let's hope Pi 4 prices return to normal sometime soon. And we also had a nice looking Raspberry Pi case here by Brian Weller. This is for Raspberry Pi 4, but you can also use it with a Pi 3 with some adjustments. And it does look pretty cool. I like the angle of the fan and all the, uh, all the slots are accessible. Saw so this project which allows you to use the official 7 inch touchscreen display but powering it with batteries. So we've got a Pi 3B Plus there and all the information is in there, like very very detailed information if you're looking to do this sort of thing yourself. And all the configuration is shown there as well. And I meant to mention at the start, this is the KDE Plasma build that I use built on Raspberry Pi OS. I just did an update today and all the icons have changed and so we've got some Slightly nicer looking, bit more polished looking icons. I mean, it's a, it was a lovely looking operating system anyway. Works really well. I use it on most of my Pis and uh, it is definitely my operating system of choice on a Raspberry Pi. If you want to download this operating system, I have a playlist uh, that basically goes through the journey I had of getting it from Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit with KDE Plasma and adding all the bits like Pi Apps, Pi Kiss, customizing it. Uh, making the video performance better, various different things like that, but you can download the latest version. I must do another update to it. Um, I think I had a couple of things that I was going to change and also just make sure it was up to date so when you download it, it hasn't got loads and loads of updates to do at the time. Now this next story is uh, a pie in the wild, but one that I spotted. I've just emailed it to myself. So let's open that up and how's this going to look if I just open it like that. There, here we are. So let's rotate that. You can see here, this is in a curry store, and this is like a diagnostics machine for televisions. And you can see that it's actually running Raspberry Pi OS. So in the next picture, so here you can see device journeys. It's got like a menu system here. So if it's a return or repair, you just pick the corresponding button. And it comes with its own case. You can see that it's got uh, plenty of space to keep it cool. And I zoomed in a bit on my phone just to have a good look in there. I'm pretty sure I worked it out it was a Pi 4. But definitely nice and solid. It, it really feels like it's, it's built to last. And a bit more of the menus here, look. Enter the manufacturer, enter the device model. Connect HDMI to auto-identify the TV set. And for some reason I took a picture of the cables, but that's as clear as mud when it's presented like that. But yeah, I was excited to see a Pi in the wild. 
This was cool, uh, a Raspberry Pi Pico pen holder and calendar for your desk. Uh, so if we scroll down, it shows you how it's constructed so you can see the Pico underneath and the little LCD display and, uh, and all the wiring and everything. Nice little project you might want to do. And this Reddit post, uh, which has Raspberry Pis found in Ukrainian drones. Uh, I don't know how good this picture is. Yeah, I'd say that's a Pi. That looks like two micro HDMI, so I'd say that's Pi 4s. For anybody wondering, that's a Cube Orange flight controller, most likely running RG Pilot with the Pi acting as a companion computer, with the two communicating via the Mavlink protocol. The cube handles the actual flying, which has real-time constraints, while the Pi handles things that require more processing power, but which aren't flight critical. Potentially computer vision, LTE, SATCOM, communication, etc. Bit more impressive than my Pi in the wild. Another Pico in this project. Uh, build your own accessible Alpaca gaming controller. And you can see here, it looks pretty cool, actually. Looks like it's got quite a lot of detailed information on how to do it. So there's a custom board here. There's the Pico. A lot of people using Picos as controllers and for keyboards and things like that. Oh, here we are, a bit of 3D printing. Always love a bit of 3D printing. Loads of bits. It's quite a lot of assembly as well. Look at that, all the trigger buttons and everything. That, that's an impressive project. Looks pretty strong as well, the way it's constructed. Yeah, love that. Kind of on gaming. Uh, we had a lacquer release. Uh, well, this is back in January. Uh, but uh, 4.3, so nice to see these things getting updates. And you can see here, talking about the Linux kernels, talking about the various different devices that it's working with, but the Pi 4 is always pretty much at the forefront of any of these things. And I mentioned earlier on about Bluetooth support on a Pico W. Well, we now have it. So we were told that Bluetooth was not enabled at the time, but might be at a later stage. SDK 1.5.0 release of the Pico SDK is now available with Bluetooth implemented using BT Stack. Bluetooth support is considered beta, but you can see various different things are implemented. The Raspberry Pi Foundation mentioned that they've now got a Raspberry Pi Pico Windows installer to make it much easier to use a Pico with a Windows device. So if you're planning to do that, that will be very, very good news to you. There's a YouTube video that goes with this. Uh, so Michael Clements, who also makes some really nice Raspberry Pi cases, uh, has made a NAS case for a Pi 02W. So hopefully 02Ws will be available soon but uh, it's a really good video really goes through all the information and everything on building it as a NAS and uh, definitely worth watching this was a weird one so Raspberry Pi to brain interface and here is the board Pi EEG so it measures EEG signals produced by the brain as well as other bioelectrical signals in other words he has turned a Raspberry Pi into a brain computer interface so maybe we don't need that controller we had earlier on we can just use our brain to control the games but yeah, really, really interesting. There's a video again on that one. Recall Box 9 came out recently. Better handling of Bluetooth. Retro shaders to give the appearance of old school CRTs. Windows 95 and 98 emulation by DOSBox Pure. This is cool. Uh, so I did this in Lacquer recently. Was it Lacquer? Yeah. Uh, so I put Windows 98 in Lacquer and also Windows 95. And it was a super easy installation with DOSBox Pure. So uh, yeah, nice to see that come into Recallbox. Really nice interface with Recallbox. Now a great tutorial came out for upgrading a Raspberry Pi 1 gig to an 8 gig model. And it also has parts, listings and everything else in there. But to be fair, you need to be, you need to seriously know what you're doing with soldering. I mean, especially the bit in the video where he puts the RAM down on the board and has to kind of marry it up and he's waiting for it to spring back in place. Very, very skilled. Uh, certainly not something I would ever attempt with solder, but yeah, really nice to see it. It was a great, it was a great video. Really interesting to see how you know he, he uh, masked off various different areas from heat and had to replace the tape and things like that. So definitely, definitely worth watching. Although it looks like a lot of people have already watched it. 158,000 views in nine days. And last up, I had a comment on this video. Pi 400 still widely available. This was 11 months ago. Do we have a look at the most recent comment? Well, you can't get it anymore. It's sold out in authorized sellers. So I thought, because at the time, I'm pretty sure Amazon had always had them. And Amazon do have them. Uh, there's, but this was interesting because it comes up as Raspberry Pi Wave 400, four gig. And uh, I kind of looked at it several times and couldn't, couldn't kind of work out why it was called that. Uh, so sold by Amazon EU. So it's Amazon in stock. And uh, 
it's the German version, but the pictures aren't the German version. So you can see it's got a QWERTY keyboard, and on a German keyboard, it would be QWERTZ. So whether they've switched the keys around, I mean, it will work fine. I, I can't see any reason not to have it. I'm not sure about uh, symbols. Uh, you can see there's a pound symbol and a dollar symbol. So I wonder if you'll get different symbols if you ordered it. But it's quite a good price. Uh, so 101.11, although it does say usually dispatch within four to six weeks. Uh, so if we do the normal one, there are Pi 400s in stock on Amazon, but they were, was it 130 pound, I think it was? Yeah, so the main one is 130 pound. If anybody can think of why it says Raspberry Pi Wave, because I've never seen that before, and I couldn't quite work out why it was. But Pi 400s are available in Amazon, not as cheap as they could be, but uh, I think it's still a great price for a brilliant product. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.